Hi, I'm Ellen from The Chili Dog, and this is week four of the Line Drawing Socks Knit Along, hosted by my friends at Makers Mercantile. This week, we are going to finish our sock by knitting in the heel. Before we start knitting, take a deep breath and make sure that you are working on a flat surface. The setup for this section is going to require a little bit of concentration and it may look intimidating because for just a brief moment, we are going to have a big hole here at the middle of our sock with stitches dangling on either side of that opening. After we get those stitches back onto our knitting needles, things get a whole lot easier because the heel shaping is very similar to what we used at the toe of our sock. Let me give you an idea of what we're going to be doing today. We'll start by removing this waist yarn that is knit into the heel of our sock. After we do that, we'll have an opening with stitches held on lifelines on either side of that opening. We'll slide knitting needles through the held stitches, remove our lifelines, and then we're going to work a setup round where we'll join a new yarn and we'll also pick up two stitches on either side of the sock. After the setup round, things get easy because we're shaping the heel very much like we shaped the toe. And then we'll close things up. Let's get started. Not all knitters put lifelines through the stitches that are on either side of this waist yarn when they're knitting an afterthought heel. This is a technique that's not usually specified in knitting patterns, but it makes our life so much easier at this point. Without lifelines, we would need to get our knitting needles through these stitches on either side of the waist yarn, either before or while we are removing the waist yarn. To me, it's very cumbersome and hard to maneuver. However, since our stitches are safely held here on lifelines, we can remove the waist yarn completely and then insert our knitting needles. It can be helpful here to trim your waist yarn just so that it has a short tail and that just makes it so that we don't have quite so much of a length of yarn to get tangled up in our work. Now we are going to use a knitting needle and one leg at a time we are going to lift the stitches working across the row and completely remove this waist yarn and it doesn't really matter which direction you're working from. So I'm going to start out here just working from right to left. And I'm just going under each leg and just carefully removing that waist yarn. And as you're working, if this tail starts getting a little bit long and getting in your way, you can just go ahead and trim it and then keep pulling out stitches. And I'm gonna trim it one more time here. And now our waist yarn is completely out and you can see as bad I have not woven in my tail from the toe quite yet. Now that our waist yarn is out, you can see we have this big hole here where our heel is going to be knit. We need to slide one needle through the stitches here on the bottom of the foot and one needle through these held stitches here across the back of the leg. And to do that, we're going to kind of lift up our lifeline and you're just sliding your knitting needle through each stitch parallel to that lifeline. And again, you want to make sure you're going through the center of every stitch 
and not piercing any of the stitches. So just one by one, go through the stitches. Sometimes this last stitch can be kind of tricky because it wants to fall back down in. So you can just use the lifeline to kind of pull it up and out so that you can get your needle through. So I have my knitting needle through the stitches here at the back of the leg. I'm gonna turn things and now I'm going to put my knee, another knitting needle through these stitches that are at the bottom of the foot. And again, you just want to make sure your needle is going parallel to the lifeline and through the center of every stitch. And again, these last couple stitches sometimes want to fall back down through. So you can just use your lifeline to kind of pull them up so you can get your needle through. And now my second needle is through all the stitches. Once both of your needles are in place, we don't need these lifelines anymore. So you can trim the knot where we tied them together. And then pull them completely out of your work. Looks like this one is caught right here. So I'm gonna go back and try to fix that stitch because things should pull out smoothly like that. It looks like maybe on this one side that I got my yarn caught a little bit. So before I pull out the lifeline, I'm gonna go back just a few stitches and try to fix things. And that happens sometimes. If the lifeline doesn't pull out smoothly, it means you got caught somewhere. Looks like it happened right there. And you can see this, this process just takes a little bit of patience sometimes. And now I had a stitch fall down in. So I'm gonna just use my lifeline to pull it up so that I can get my needle through. there. I'm going to finish up these last couple stitches off camera so I can take a little bit of a closer look and then we'll pull out the other lifeline. Okay, I got those last few stitches back up onto my needles and now I'm going to pull out the second lifeline and all of my stitches are nicely held on my needles. And maybe I'll just pull the other way. There. So now we're ready to join our yarn and start knitting. 
Now that we have our heel stitches up onto our knitting needles, we're ready to join a new piece of yarn and start knitting the heel. Half of my heel stitches are on one needle and half of my heel stitches are on a second needle. Traditionally, when you're working an afterthought heel, the new yarn is joined and your rounds are going to begin and end at the center of the sock on the bottom of the foot. And this is done because then that join is going to be inconspicuous. Nobody is ever going to see it because it's on the bottom of your foot. So I need to slip some stitches here so that I can join the yarn at the bottom of my foot here at the center. So I know that I have 30 stitches across here. So I'm going to slip 15 of these stitches onto a third knitting needle. So then I can join my new yarn. And again, we're just slipping purl wise. I don't want to twist any of the stitches at all. So I'm just going to slip 15 stitches onto a third needle. And now I'm ready to join my new yarn. You could theoretically just start knitting with that new piece of yarn. However, then you're going to end up with a little hole or gap here right at the bottom of the foot. And you could use your yarn tail to weave that in. I have a different way that I like to join in my new yarn at this point. I'm going to look at the last stitch on my right needle. And then I'm going to insert my left needle into the stitch below right here and I'm going to just go right through the center. I'm going to grab my new piece of yarn and I decided for the heel I'm actually working from the center of the ball whereas I worked the rest of my sock from the outside. You want the part of the yarn that is attached to your yarn ball here at the back and your yarn tail is going to be at the front of the needle and you just want to pull that through that lower stitch and then slip it over onto your right needle without twisting it. After we complete our first round of knitting, we're going to treat these two stitches, the one that I was originally from my sock and the one that I just joined, as if they were a single stitch and we will work them together. Also, since this is where our rounds begin and it's not at the side of the sock as like it was for the rest of the sock, we are actually, I like to put in a little stitch marker right there, just so I know that that is the end of my round. Now that we've joined our new yarn, we are ready to work the setup round of the heel. Before I do that, I'm going to take my yarn tail and I am just going to tuck it down into the toe of my sock. And when I'm all done knitting the heel, I'll weave that in. To get started with the setup round, we're just going to knit across until we get to the side of the sock. When you're working an afterthought heel, if you would just continue working in the round for this first round, you would end up getting two fairly sizable holes at the side of the sock where these gaps are. So to minimize those holes, we're going to pick up two stitches in each gap on the sides of the sock. And there are a variety of ways that you could pick up these stitches. My favorite method combines the idea of a lifted increase and a make one increase. So the idea is we're going to pick up the leg of one of the stitches that's here in the gap. And we're also going to pick up the horizontal strand that leads from our stitches on our needles into the gap and then work them together. So before we begin, let's kind of get oriented a little bit. We're going to think of our columns of stitches here as generations of a family. The stitches that I'm working for this round are going to be the child stitches. The stitches just below that 
are the parent stitches and the stitches below the parent are going to be the grandparent stitches. We also want to be able to identify our stitches as V's. So if our stitches are V's, this is the right hand leg of the V and the right hand leg of the stitch. This is the left hand leg of the stitch. So now that we figured that out, what we want to do is first we're going to pick up the leg of, first we need to find the grandparent stitch underneath the stitch we just worked. So, and I'm going to use my other knitting needle here just to kind of point things out. So the stitch on our needles is the child. This V that's underneath that is the parent and the V that's underneath that is the grandparent. We want to pick up the right hand leg of the grandparent's neighbor that's in the gap. So it's the very first leg of the grandparent's neighbor that's in the gap. So it's going to be this leg right here. I'm not going to pick it up quite yet because I want to identify one more thing. We also are going to be picking up the horizontal strand that is going to tighten up the parent. And it's going to be a little bit tricky for this very first one that we're picking up just because of the nature of the fabric. So here's the parent stitch. And you can see it's kind of widened out here. And we want to also be picking up this horizontal strand that tightens up that parent stitch. So I'm gonna get my tension back to normal here. So again, we want the left leg of the grandparent, or the right leg rather, of the grandparent's neighbor. So here's the child, parent, grandparent. I want the right leg of its neighbor. And also the horizontal strand that tightens up the parent. And really that horizontal strand here is just above my needle tip. It's this one right here. So you don't have to do a whole lot of motion to grab it. Once I have both of those on my needle, I am going to treat them as if they were a single stitch and I'm going to knit them together and that will be my first picked up stitch. So I'm just going to knit those two loops together and that's my first picked up stitch. Now let's turn things and we're going to pick another stitch up on the other side of the gap. And this one's going to be a whole lot easier to see, I think. The child stitches are the ones that we're working right now. So the one that's on my left needle here, this is a parent stitch. The V that's below it is the grandparent and we want to pick up the first leg of the grandparent's neighbor in the gap. So it's this left leg right here. And we also want to pick up that horizontal strand that's leading into the parent from the gap into the next parent. And it's pretty easy this time because the fabric isn't quite as tight and there's not so much weirdness happening. So I've got both of those on my right needle. I'm just going to slip them up onto my left needle, but don't pull the right needle out necessarily. And we're going to work those two strands we just picked up together as a single stitch and then drop them off the left needle. And that's our second picked up stitch. So now we're going to knit across the back of the leg until we get to the gap that's on the other side and then we'll pick up two stitches over there as well. Now that we've reached the gap here on the other side of our sock, again, we want to pick up two stitches. So the first one, let's find the grandparent's neighbor. So the child is on our needles, the parent is just below it, and here's the grandparent. We want to pick up the right hand leg of the grandparent's neighbor, which is right here. And we also want to pick up that horizontal strand that's going to tighten up the parent. And it's right here, right next to it. And again, 
It's a little bit easier to see here than it was the first time just because of the nature of the fabric. Once I have those two strands on my left needle, I'm going to go ahead and knit them together. And that's one picked up stitch. Then I'm going to turn things so I can start on my next needle and I need to pick up one more stitch in this gap. Let's slide things down so I'm ready to start knitting after I pick those up. And again, we're going to find the grandparent. So the stitch on our needle, we, since we haven't made the child yet, this is going to be the parent. This next stitch down is the grandparent. It's right here. And we want to pick up the left leg this time of the grandparent's neighbor that's in the gap. And also this horizontal strand that tightens up the next parent stitch. And again, it's a lot easier to see. That first one is just a little bit tricky to see. I'm gonna lift those up onto my left needle, but don't pull the right needle out. And now just knit those two loops together as if they were a single stitch and drop them off. And that's our second picked up stitch. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna knit to the end of the round. Just remember when you get to this last stitch of the round before the marker, you're going to see two loops. One is the stitch and one is the loop that we lifted up to join our new yarn. Just treat those as if they were one single stitch. So we're going to knit those together. And then you can see that when we pull on the yarn tail, it kind of pulls the joining stitch to the back so it's going to be fairly inconspicuous after we weave in the tail. Slip our end of round marker over. We've finished the setup round of our heel and now we're ready to continue on with our heel shaping. After you're done with the setup round you're ready to start shaping the heel of your sock. And the heel shaping is going to be very similar to our toe shaping. We're using that four point or four corner shaping method. Just like the toe, each size is going to have a different set of directions in the pattern for you to follow. And also we're going to be using the same style of decreases that SKP, the slip knit passover and the KSP or knit slip passover that we used in the toe. There are a couple differences with the heel shaping though that I'd like you to be aware of before you start knitting your heel. First of all, this time, unfortunately, we are going to have some decreases happening at the needle changes. The four points where we're going to be making our decreases are here at the center of the heel, at the bottom of the foot, at both sides, and the center of the heel at the back of the leg. Those are the four points where the decreases will happen. Another difference between the heel and the toe is that this time our rounds are beginning at the center of the sock instead of at the side of the sock like they did for the toe. To make the pattern more readable for the decrease rounds, this time the stitches in the brackets are going to represent a quarter of the sock heel instead of a half of the sock. And this means that you're going to have to repeat those bracketed stitches four times. So the first time here, the second time, the third time, and then the fourth time. The very first pair of decreases that happens here at the bottom of the foot, these decreases are going to be slightly offset. And that happens because the first decrease of this pair is going to be made at the beginning round and the second decrease of the pair is going to be made at the end of the round. Even though they're offset, it's not that big of a deal because first of all, nobody is going to see that offset because it happens here at the bottom of your foot and it's not going to really change your fabric at all. So it's not going to be uncomfortable or anything as you're wearing your sock. All of the decreases this time are paired, but there is one 
kind of exception to how things are going to work. And that is going to happen in the first decrease round of size extra small, medium, and extra large. For those three sizes in that very first decrease round, instead of making either double or single decreases at all four of the points, we're actually only going to make double decreases just at the sides. There won't be in that first decrease round, you won't have decreases at these two points, only at these two points. Now that everything is set up, you're ready to follow the pattern and to knit the heel of your sock. You're going to close things up just like you did for the toe by pulling your yarn tail through those final eight stitches and pulling it down to the inside of your sock. I finished knitting up the heel of my sock and before we say goodbye, I'd like to share one more little tip about knitting socks with afterthought heels. You'll remember earlier I said when we were doing the setup round that if you pick up two stitches on either side of the sock in that gap, that it would close things up and minimize any hole that could happen there. And on this side of my sock, things look pretty good. There isn't much of a gap right here. On the other side of my sock, however, you'll see right here, there is what I would consider to be a fairly sizable gap. And I just want to tighten that up a little bit before I say that I'm completely finished. To do that, what you want to do is you want to pull the leg of one of the stitches on either side of that hole. And here it is. So you could either pull this leg to tighten things up or this leg to tighten things up and then redistribute that length of yarn either this way or this way, depending on which one you pulled. I actually am going to prefer to go this way across the back of the leg because it's in stock in that stitch here. So I'm going to be able to easily see where I need to, which legs of the stitches I need to pull up to distribute that yarn. So I'm going to start right here. And I want to close things up, but I also don't want to cause this to spread out more. So it's just kind of a balance there of what we want to do. So you can see now I have a little bit of an extra length of yarn. So I just want to distribute that across my work. And again, I'm just going to do that by lifting one leg of a st stitch at a time and working here from right to left in this case, and just distributing that length a little bit more evenly across the sock so that there isn't a great big hole. And then once that length is distributed in a little bit and my stitches look a little bit more evenly sized, then I can either be done or if I wanted to, I could distribute a little bit the other direction too. And this still looks a little bit big to me. So I am going to go ahead and distribute a little bit the other way. So again, pull on the leg of that stitch to kind of close up the hole. And then we're just going to work across one leg at a time to kind of even things out a little bit. And that just kind of closes things up so that hole isn't quite as noticeable. So now, after I weave in my tails, I will be done with my first sock. Well, it's a kind of bittersweet moment. I'm all done knitting my socks, but that means it's time for us to say goodbye. I want to thank you so much for participating in the Line Drawing Socks Knit Along. I hope that you have enjoyed knitting with me as much as I have enjoyed knitting with you. I also want to take a moment to thank Makers Mercantile for inviting me to be a part of this really fun event. If you have any questions or comments as you are finishing up the heel of your sock, again, during the knit along, you can head over to the Makers Mercantile group on Ravelry and leave your comments or questions there. If you are working the sock after the knit along is over and you have a question, you can go ahead and leave that question in the comment section below this video on YouTube. Make sure to share pictures of your completed socks on social media. We'd love to see how they turned out. Just add 
hashtag line drawing socks K A L to your post so we can all follow along and also tag me at the chili dog and at makers mercantile so we can say congratulations. If you have enjoyed the knit along, take a moment and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. I only do knit alongs like this once or twice a year, but I do post weekly videos demonstrating a variety of different knitting stitches and knitting skills that I think you'll enjoy. Until we stitch again, happy knitting.